We live in the digital age. Computers, email and social media are now an inescapable part of our daily lives. Virtually everyone these days uses them for work, study or leisure. In many ways, this is an exciting revolution in the way we interact with each other. We can be in contact with people on the other side of the globe at any time. Messages take only seconds to reach people. Via social media, such as Twitter and Facebook, we can make contact with many people we would not be able to meet otherwise. In other ways, however, the digital age has caused problems. Issues such as online bullying have emerged. Our email inboxes become so full that sometimes we have to send hasty replies. It's easy to fire off messages quickly without thinking about how they will be received. It's very easy to sound rude in emails. This video series introduces some simple techniques to make your emails in English sound more polite. In the modern world, English is an international language. Everybody will probably need to send emails in English at some stage during their professional lives. Learning how to sound polite in emails, therefore, is a vital skill. There are three videos in the series. This first video has provided a short introduction to our topic and discusses the opening words of your email, namely how you should address the recipient. The second video discusses some of the useful phrases you need in emails, particularly thanking others for their emails, introducing new topics for communication and making requests to the other person. The final video discusses how you should sign your name at the end and what your email style says about you as an individual. So, let's begin looking at the contents of emails. In the remainder of this video, we will look at a very small but very important part of your email, the opening greeting. Here is a little quiz question. My name is Philip Seaton. I'm an associate professor at Hokkaido University. Let us suppose you want to write me an email. What's the difference between Dear Philip, Dear Seaton, and Dear Philip Seaton? This is actually an extremely important issue, because if the first impression you give to recipients of your mail is rude, they might not send you a reply. When choosing the opening greeting, there are three things that you must decide. The greeting word, the person's title, and which name or names to use. Let's look at these in turn. The first greeting word of your email really sets the tone of the whole email. The main options are these. Dear, to, hello, hi, and nothing. Put simply, these five options indicate from the beginning whether your email is polite and businesslike or casual. Dear is the most common opening greeting used in letters and now it is commonly used in emails. For all professional correspondence, dear is the safest option. It is polite and appropriate in almost all contexts. Using to can sound distant and bureaucratic. However, there are times when you want to use this distant, bureaucratic tone. If you're sending an email to a particular individual via a general email account that is read by many people, to is a good greeting to use. It explicitly states who the email is addressed to. The next two greetings, hello and hi, are more casual. You can use these greetings when you have already developed a personal relationship with the recipient. It is inappropriate to use these greetings with people who are your seniors, unless you have a strong, friendly relationship with them. Hi is a little more casual than hello. Finally, you can use no greeting at all, just the person's name and title. You may use this in a professional context in a short, business-like mail, but it is a little more casual than saying dear so-and-so. Next, 
Let's move on to the person's title. Getting a person's title right is important. There are four types of title. A title that indicates an honour or hereditary title. A title that indicates the person's professional position. A title that indicates a person's educational qualifications. And a title that indicates a person's gender and or marital status. The first type, an honour or hereditary title, is quite rare. Examples include Lord, Lady, Sir, Dame, the Right Honourable and so on. You are unlikely to use it in emails. Let's concentrate on the cases you will most likely encounter. Professor is an example of a person's professional position. It is a job name at a university or research institute. And it is inappropriate to use this title for anyone not in a professor or associate professor position. Doctor is an example of a title gained through a qualification. If you complete a PhD or become qualified as a medical doctor, people may call you doctor regardless of your job. The distinction between a position and a qualification is particularly important in the university world. It would be inappropriate to address your professor at university as Dr. Tanaka if he did not have a PhD. Similarly, if you're writing to a person who is a lecturer, it would be inappropriate to call her professor. If the person you're contacting does not have one of these titles, then you should address him using Mr. or her using Ms. There is also a term of address, Mrs., for a married woman. However, in the modern professional world, it has become less acceptable to draw attention to a woman's marital status. The term Mrs. is not rude if used correctly, but it is safest to avoid the term. Addressing someone as Mrs. if she is single or divorced might be considered a significant gaffe. Also, it goes without saying that you should be absolutely sure whether the person you are addressing is male or female before you use Mr. or Ms. Some names are used by both men and women. Examples in English include Sam from Samuel or Samantha, Chris from Christopher or Christine, and Kim. And with foreign names, often it's very difficult to tell. Finally, let's look at the person's name. You must be aware of which name is the given name and which name is the family name. In English, the basic rule is that using the given name is friendly, while using the family name is formal. In English these days, it's very common to use a person's first name, even when you do not know them very well, to create a friendly atmosphere. But what happens if you cannot tell which is the family name and which is the given name? Or what happens if you have no idea which name they like to use? In these cases, the safest thing to do is to write the person's full name in your email greeting. This has an impersonal and slightly bureaucratic sound, but it is polite and common in professional contexts. It's okay to use a title with a full name. If you decide to use only the person's first name or only the family name, using the title correctly is extremely important. In general, we do not use titles with first names, so saying Professor George sounds strange. The main exception here is for people called Sir. It's normal for people who've been knighted to be called Sir George, for example. If you use the family name only, you must have a title to be polite. Calling someone by their family name only gives a strong sense of being senior to that person. School teachers may call their pupils by their family names only, or senior officers in the army or police may call their subordinates by their family names only. Beginning an email with the greeting, Dear Saito, therefore, is condescending. You need the title, Mr. 
doctor or professor to make it polite. All of these rules may seem very complicated, but we can summarise the best opening greetings as follows. Distant and bureaucratic but polite. Dear Philip Seaton, to Dr. Philip Seaton. Polite. Dear Dr. Seaton, dear Professor Seaton. Friendly. Hello, Dr. Seaton, dear Philip. Casual. Hi, Philip. Philip. Condescending. Hi, Prof. Seaton, dear Seaton. Here are three final hints. First, if you do not know the person's exact title or which is their family name, make sure you use their complete name. If you say dear plus their full name, you cannot be impolite. Second, if you are writing in English to someone who understands Japanese language and culture, adding the Japanese title is a very nice way to address someone. So, beginning an email with Dear Suzuki-sensei or Dear Suzuki-san is both friendly and polite. Third, if you are corresponding with the person regularly, look to see how they sign their name. If they sign their email using their first name only, it is safe to reply using their first name. However, we will discuss this more in video 3.